So, well, we're joined now by Falabi Melkade, who is an education consultant. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you very much. We're well, getting back to education because, I mean, uh, yes, time and again, we have people say, look, this is the basis. This should be the fulcrum of society, development, whatever revolves around education. Yeah. But here we are, uh, the way we're going about all of this, I don't know, do we seem to recognize that it really is important to tackle education? But so far, uh, we've seen ASUP. ASUP, thankfully, they called off their strike. But we still have SANU, we have SANIB, but ASU at the moment, still not called off yet. Okay, thank you very much. Well, ASUP, I think they called off because they started first. <laughs> they <laughs> so started it's done by before, before the um, national ASU joined in. But, um, <sighs> you know, first and foremost, this issue of ASU strike, um, I think we grew up getting to know about ASU strike. I think um, so it's something, I remember the first strike was... Um, the one that I got to remember, I think, was about 1989 or so. And um, I was on my way to Federal Warrior at that time. So we're going through Benin, and Uniben was all, um, was all in disarray at that time because the students were protesting, you know, they were on the street, and um, our vehicle was almost vandalized. So, um, so we grew up into this thing. But I think it's high time we should actually have an end of this ASU strikes, um, government issues, not... Um, one person not meeting up his obligation. My challenge here is the fact that over the years, we now have quite a lot of this. First and foremost, I, I don't believe ASU would go on strike, would be very frivolous in just going on strike. I mean, these are distinguished um, academicians here, the professors. Um, at that best, you know, professors are known to be conservative. And uh, so I don't think they would just embark on strike for going on strike. Um, I don't know, they are not politicians, so there's no reason um, for that. For them to call off, the, for them to call on this strike, um, there must be genuine reasons. And again, you don't call on, you don't start your strikes by total strikes. So obviously there must have been, you know, whether it's warning strikes, it must have been um, um, letters written to um, the government agencies and all that. Now, what is quite interesting for me to note is the fact that a lot of the people in government now are actually members of this um, constituency. I mean, the president is a lecturer, was a lecturer before going into politics. Um, the minister of education is a professor. So I'm, I'm quite worried, you know, that um, when, because what you typically find is when you get into governance, the first area you want to look out for at least is your constituency. And um, you would almost want to think that, and you, it would amaze you the number of um, academicians that are actually in politics now. The deputy governor of um, Delta State is a professor of law in Unilag. I mean, so when you get into governance, and with a lot of them in governance, you would actually think that um, we shouldn't hear about us to strike anymore. Um, so like the last person, who, who the, uh, your last guest just said. I mean, so I don't understand why they now cannot, because you've all been a part of this, I mean, you've all been a part of this community, mm -hmm. all the, whatever the struggles of the union right now, and the lecturers, you've all been a part of it at one time. Mm -hmm. So now that you're in governance, you should even be the best person to be able to rewrite the issues. Let me mention this, because in 2009, yeah. no, 11, because that agreement was signed in 2009. Nine, yes. And unbelievably, that's what they're still battling over yes. to date. Now, at that time, the Minister of Education has said that, well, uh, the federal government will need 106 billion naira to meet up with that 2009 agreement. But as they spoke at that time, in 2011, the IGR of this uh, university is put together, she said, was just about 25 billion. Okay. And so, in that argument that went back and forth, they did not agree between themselves, between government and ASU, where they will source the remaining funds from. So that was a stalemate at the time. But okay. incidentally, it's still the issue now. How to get those funds to meet up with the demands of ASU? Well, first and foremost, I think one of the things they, the ASU is putting forward is, hey, we're not the only sector in crisis. Aviation is in crisis. Banking was in crisis and is coming out of crisis. And there have been interventions from government. 
you know, with intervention funds and things like that. So why shouldn't, I mean, power is in crisis. And I know they declared, the we declared the state of emergency on power. So why can't we declare a state of emergency on education if that really is the position of government? Funding would always and forever be an issue. Um, so, on, so I think they have, a, they have a point there to say if you can. So the first thing then is you probably are not, um, you don't consider education to be that important. You know, because those who signed the agreement in the first place, yes. if she was saying uh, when the agreement was signed in 2009, yes. I'm quoting her, the agreement did not stipulate who will even pay the money or from what source. The area was left unattended to and we now have to enter into another dialogue on where and how the money is going to be sourced. And so you wonder, look, you thought that they would have tied up all these loose ends when they signed this agreement because if ASU enters into this agreement, it's not up to them to find out how this money will be sourced. Exactly. The government has got to find how the money will be sourced. And so... Okay. Now, well, since you said to me that um, our discussion this morning is really not the focus on the problems but solutions to the problem. Now, oh, one yeah. of the first things is um, um, ASU and the government. So I let me join all the other Nigerians to appeal to both parties. Um, uh, it's not a case of shooting your sword here, but um, basically coming into partnership. Um, so one of the first things is um, there is nobody that can solve any problem in isolation. So when ASU and the government, and, and you see, it's also one of the problems we have where we are not dealing with government as an institution. I mean, so when ASU went into signing these negotiations in 2009 yeah. and then in 2011 they had to come back again to the table it's a government it's the federal government of nigeria so whether it was one presidency at that time or another presidency at, uh, at this time it really should not matter i mean it's a contractual agreement and we should work to mm. honor it now the reality is mm -hmm. when the minister of education this current minister of education when she came into position and, of course, in your handovers, one of the things you should have done is when you looked at that agreement then, yeah. you should have called us and said, come, okay, I see a gap here. Or I see... Uh, <laughs> After having signed. I, I, you know, I mean, at least you should have called us to now say, okay, we need to work together on what are the possible ways we can raise funding. If the issue is solely funding. What about, what comes to your mind if you hear them talk about autonomy for the universities? I think it's long overdue. I am what, an what advocate. kind of autonomy? Well, I mean, case? again, I'm an advocate of the fact that um, universities should be made, not even just universities, but all educational institutions, but yes, we're talking about technical institutions here, should be made to have their own autonomy, should be made to have their own life. You know, the last but, time I was But you know that, yeah. if that were to happen, yeah. one thing that we may or will have to deal with is there'll be a lot of protest because... If the universities were to charge their own fees, we will pay far much more than we're paying today. Now, there are two, two things. One, one is the fact that we've got to always come to a realistic level playing field. Mm, realistic. Mm -hmm. Realistic level playing field. Now, because what is happening is unreal if, or, or is unrealistic. If you say, okay, continue the way you're running, no autonomy, so they deserve what they are asking for. I mean, the, the lecturers deserve what they're asking for. And you now say, okay, you're, you're bringing in 26 billion, you want to, you're demanding for 106 billion. So the question is, why are you asking me how we can generate funds when you haven't given us the autonomy to be able to generate <laughs> the funds ourselves? So. I think that in being able to generate that funding autonomy, the 